Welcome to Electron Line. One of the most unique features of the Earth is definitely its liquid water. When viewed from space, and unfortunately I haven't had the opportunity, only very few individuals had the opportunity to view Earth from space, but the beautiful part of looking at Earth from space is that huge blue color of the oceans of the Earth as seen from space. Yes, about 71% of the Earth's surface is covered by liquid water. And that makes the planet unique for a variety of reasons, especially the ability to sustain life. Probably water, not only because the water is necessary for biological processes, but water really does a lot of things such as uh, condition the climate to have an average temperature around the world that is very uh, stable and therefore very favorable to life. So if 71% of the Earth is covered by liquid water, when we compare the Northern Hemisphere to the Southern Hemisphere, we do notice that the Southern Hemisphere is 80.9% covered with water, as opposed to the Northern Hemisphere at 61.1%, so roughly 60% at the North and 80% at the South. So that the temperature of the Southern Hemisphere is much more stable as compared to the Northern Hemisphere. So the extremes between summer and winter are much more severe in the Northern Hemisphere than they are in the Southern Hemisphere. Also because the Northern Hemisphere is much more the total land mass compared to the Southern Hemisphere, the climate variation of the whole world is much more controlled by the Northern Hemisphere as compared to the Southern Hemisphere. And the average temperature of the world dips quite a bit, drops about 7 degrees Fahrenheit during the period where the Northern Hemisphere has winter as opposed to when the Southern Hemisphere has winter. So yes, the Northern Hemisphere having much more land mass compared to water as opposed to the Southern Hemisphere does control the climate quite a bit more. What would happen if we didn't have such large oceans covering much of the Earth's surface? Well, the temperature swings would absolutely be enormous. And as a comparison, even though most of the Earth is covered with water, Take a look at Siberia. When you go to Siberia, there's a huge landmass there. Eurasia is, of course, one of the biggest landmasses. Well, it is the biggest landmass in the world, but it covers a great percentage of the total land area of the world. Winters will drop down to as cold as 60 and 70 below, while summers can be as warm as 70 to 80 degrees below. There are, of course, exceptions. It can get colder. It can get warmer on occasion. But typically, on average, every winter, temperatures dip tremendously in the wintertime and rise to quite comfortable conditions in the summertime. Those are huge temperature swings. And that's on a world where 71% of the, 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 the uh, surface is covered by water. Imagine if it was reversed. Imagine if it was 71% land and only 29% uh, ocean. What would be the difference? Well, temperatures in the winter would probably easily drop in many places to 100 below and would definitely be many places around the world well above 100 degrees. Today, only in the desert regions of the world that happens. But imagine if there was only 29% water, 71% land, over 100 degree temperatures, 120, 130, 140 would be common in many places in the world during the year. What's also interesting is that the land mass is not only uh, not evenly distributed between North and Southern Hemisphere, it's also different parts of the world looking at it from a different perspective. If you grab a globe and you look at it in such a way that New Zealand is at the center. So when you take a look here, and you have New Zealand at the center, Notice that the only other land masses you can see from that perspective is Australia over here and Antarctica and maybe a little bit here, the islands near Indonesia and so forth. But for the rest, you wouldn't see any other land masses. But in other words, when you look at the Earth from this perspective, that's called the water hemisphere, 89% of that half of the globe is covered by water. Absolutely astonishing which means that if you look at the other side, when you go directly to the other side, you have these huge land masses of Africa, Europe, Asia, Greenland, and part of North America. And then you realize that from this perspective, the great majority of the Earth is then covered by a land mass. Again, the fact that the Earth has so much water is unique, both from a, cons uh, from a consideration as a planet and for the consideration of being able to harbor life and, and have a, a very a moderate, climate and moderate temperature swings. Now, if you take a look at it from this perspective, that's another really interesting perspective to look at the amount of water that the Earth has. If you could separate the water from the rest of the Earth, the Earth, of course, would still be a sphere with a diameter very close to what it is today, 12 
1,756 kilometers or about 8,000 miles. And if you took all the water away from the Earth and made it its own planet, so to speak, it would have a diameter of about 1,400 kilometers, about 860 miles. Now, of course, you look at this and go, wow, the Earth does not have a lot of water. The thing is that water is primarily distributed over the surface of the earth and so if you took this amount of water and spread it over that's why you have these huge oceans. Another interesting fact is that if you took this water and compared it to the largest asteroid of our solar system, Ceres, which is the only asteroid large enough to gravitationally pull itself into a sphere, the amount of water we have on the earth has a larger volume than the total volume of Ceres. So it's not a little bit of water that we have, we actually have a tremendous amount of water. Now there are other bodies in the solar system that also have large quantities of water, but it's not necessarily in the liquid state, or at least not on the surface. We'll be visiting those, those, uh, those other objects in later videos, but at least now you have kind of a feel for how much water the Earth actually has. It may not look like, like a lot in this perspective, but when it's covering more, almost three quarters of the surface of the Earth, you can imagine that is a lot of water and it's very unique in our solar system.